Hi, I'm Gabe Josephs and welcome to my how-to videos on the Acadia heat pump system. Okay, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm not actually going to go over how to do anything with this system. Instead, what I uh, am going to do here is I'm going to show you my test setup here at the shop. Let's go ahead and get a good look at it. I've got an Acadia heat pump with a air handler, a three-ton Acadia heat pump with an air handler sitting on top. This is a fully functional system. Everything works. I can get the air handler to run with the condenser, okay, uh, both in heating or cooling mode. And, uh, and what I'm doing is I am life testing a UMSR 50 potential relay, if you can see it back there. I'm testing a UMSR 50 potential relay. I took out the dual relay uh, setup. So this had a dual contact, a dual relay setup, which was spec'd by Bristol Compressors. Uh, this is exactly how they told Hallowell to set up the uh, T81 compressor when they switched from the T89 to the T81. And, uh, and it fails. I am convinced that Bristol single-handedly put Hallowell out of business because of this setup and the high failure rate. Okay, what I'm using here is I'm using an ICM sequencer. ICM has been fantastic from, uh, from getting me a uh, potential relay, the UMSR50, to test, and a sequencer to really put this system through an absolutely gruesome test. Okay? What I'm doing is I'm running a 3 second on, 16 second off cycle. So this unit I'm putting through a absolutely tremendous life test. Now, these are still pretty rough conditions. This is 91 degrees inside of my shop here in Deerfield, Massachusetts. And, uh, and I've got this system starting and stopping into three, well, more than 300 PSI. I have this set up with this sequence to run uh, somewhere between 310 and, and 375 uh, PSI. Oh, I'm sorry, it's actually more like 325 to 375. Uh, so, if you watch, you can actually see this system continuously start well over 300 PSI in second stage. Okay? With the UMSR50. Now, I want to point out, I am not using the original start capacitor. If you can get a good look at this, you can see that I'm using a 145 to 175 microfarad capacitor. Now this is what I took out. I took out a 238 to 262 microfarad with the two potential relays. This Acadia system was in for about two years. I installed it uh, for a customer of mine and we had already replaced the potential relays once. Now so roughly about a year after, after the system went into operation, I replaced the potential relays. I didn't understand at the time exactly why, but now I do. The way that this is set up is the L2 and T2 side of the primary one and primary two contactors was uh, feeding the potential relays. And what happens is we've got a high current running through the left side of each of these two potential relays and a low current running through the right side. I've got it completely, the right side disconnected uh, completely uh, with the new UMSR50 setup. Now, if you watch, what it's going to do right now is precisely what the system did with the potential relays wired into the T2 side. You get a very low current through the right side and no arcing, and a high current through the left side, which creates quite a bit of arcing. That little bit of buildup on the left side contact causes that bar across the middle of the contactors to teeter. And what we started to notice was we had resistance across the right side, the, the L2 to the T2 side of the contactor, and not across the left side. If I shut this down and push it in and ohm it, I can see uh, I've I can see I've got a zero resistance, a zero ohm resistance across the left side. This setup right here, after running in my customer's house for about two years, uh, I have on the 
Uh, L2 side, I have uh, the, the L2 T2 side of the primary 2 compressor. Okay, I've got uh, bouncing around resistance all the way around uh, 40 to 60 ohms and even higher. It just bounces all around. The primary 1 contact of the right side uh, didn't bounce around quite as high, but still anywhere from 10 to 20 uh, ohms resistance across the right side. Now what's interesting is even though the left side is constantly flashing, that's reading zero. So uh, the dual potential relay setup, which is authorized by Bristol, is failing at a huge, huge rate. And my test setup, my life cycle setup here, with the UMSR 50 and the 145 to 175 start cap in my three ton system is working absolutely perfectly. And this is absolutely abnormal. You will never see this kind of cycle through a system. Absolutely not. The minimum off time is two minutes between stage one and stage two. And the minimum off time after a, a cooling or heating call is ended and another one can begin is five minutes. And I'm putting this through a three minute, a, a three second on rather, and 16 second off cycle. So this is taking an absolute beating and working like a charm. So I'd like to know why Bristol will not qualify this setup. I can get this, this system to start over 400 PSI in stage two every single time and over 300 PSI in stage one with that smaller capacitor at this sort of temperature, 90, 95, I've had this system running at 96 degrees in the shop here and it can start absolutely no problem with that smaller uh, start cap. So take care for now and I, I hope you enjoy uh, what it is that I've done with this system and, and my proving that this system really does work uh, with the proper controls. And I would like to see Bristol qualify the UMSR 50 for this system and hopefully uh, eventually qualify a smaller start cap because it's putting a lot less of a beating on this system. Okay, take care for now.